Evening ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Jonas and today we're going to talk about something else entirely, namely Super Meat Boy and the upcoming in-game editor for Super Meat World, which unlocks at 20 bandages and will be released sometime during January, or it's what it says on the blog anyway. So I've gone through and made a small analysis, as well as made a prototyping tool, which is just a Photoshop file and a few brushes. And I will show you how I use that to create mockups of levels before the editor is released, so I will have a running start uh, when it actually comes out. So the design principles are basically just jumps, pacing and margin of error, which together creates the gameplay. And then there is the prototyping part, which will show you a small demo of the Photoshop file and one example I've created already. So for the design principles, I will start out with the most basic principle of all, uh, basic map, which is the first map in the game. And what it has is basically just two jumps, either top there and then up to meet girl, <laughs> bandage girl, or you can jump up that side if you're more advanced, but I suppose you're uh, going to take the right side of the first uh, playthrough just because of this ramp here, which leads you to the wall towards the right. What this has is uh, no real pacing, unless you're going for the A plus achievement or reward. Uh, you can take however long as you want to and you will eventually get up there. It has no uh, rate of error because you can't actually die unless you jump up the top of the map, which is fairly silly. And if we switch to the dark world instead, the jumps are still the same. Uh, right side or left side. Uh, yeah. The margin of error is this size here. You have to fit through that window to get the bandage girl, but as long as you, you make the same jumps as you do on normal, the pacing is also uh, almost infinite, unless you're going for the A plus achievement again. If we switch to a more advanced map, you can see here the jumps uh, something like this, are actually fairly simple, but the uh, margin of error is smaller. Uh, oh, that was a shitty brush. Let's paint in blue instead. Better blue. So, the margin of error with that jump is smaller, this is smaller uh, than the previous example, but it's still fairly simple, and the the errors you make here will mostly allow you to get back to the start and start over, if that is what you want. So you can fall down safely, I suppose. In the Dark World example of the same map here, the jumps themselves are almost exactly the same, except for this part here where you have to jump one time extra. The difference is the margin of error is smaller, because you can die from the saw blade at the, uh, the bottom here, as well as the saw blade at the top, giving you less chances to fall down and survive, so you can start over. Um, so that's the basic principles of jumps, pacing and margin of error, and this also is a bit different between different stages of the map. If we take this map, again starting over, the start has fairly simple jumps, and since the only way to actually die is to hit this saw blade or fall off the edge, which is actually something you do quite a lot, like just run off the edge and then fall down here, um, you will be able to learn this the start of the map uh, fairly fast. All of this, these jumps can be done mechanically, you won't have to wait for anything timing-wise, and you still have quite a bit of margin of error here. The only limiting factor is actually gravity, because that's what makes you lose time here. I don't know like the exact time it takes to drop down the edge, but that's your limit right there. But w once you get to the middle of the part, you will actually have harder jumps and smaller margins of error. While this, uh, this window here looks fairly large. Uh, you also have to consider the edge of this saw blade, so jumping across here is a bit difficult. 
but once you make it you will land safely and then just be able to to continue with the map. This is similar jump like this below except that this saw blade isn't there, it's just jumping between two bigger saw blades. The end is fairly mechanical, you can stop between every jump on this map anyway, but the difficult part is actually on the top left here, so I made a pretty bad screenshot. I will draw what this looks like. It's basically a platform with the key, saw blade on the left, and this, then it's this one and this one. So what you're supposed to do is take the key, fall down, uh, go right, and then go left, and you will end up uh, down here. So once you get to the difficult part, you can actually wait as long as you want, and then try to figure out how to get through it. The start, again, uh, repeating myself, the start is simple jumping. You want to learn it mechanically because you will do it a lot. And you also have to wait uh, for wait for no man, wait for nothing. Uh, so you can do it over and over again fast if you happen to make a mistake at the beginning and just uh, blaze through it again. The middle part is where you should put the, the difficult sections of your map. And then at the end again you can let players rest if they want to, take as long as they want, and then finally rescue bandage go. If we take a look at this map again in its Dark World version, you will see that the jumps again are fairly similar. This is the the Light World and then the Dark World. So what you have to do is basically just jump between the two soul blades here again. The difference is that in the Light World you'd land safely as long as you got through the, this jumping part. And here you will have to hit this window as well once you've gone through the one at the top. So pacing wise this map is a fairly bad example because the only real pacing elements are the gliding down walls and then jumping through but some maps have big rows of saw blades following you across the map which basically set the pacing for the entire map and if you're going for the A plus achievements you will have an even shorter time and will have to uh, hit every jump perfectly which is something that designers should also think about, like if you fail you will want to die usually, because if you fail and then have to go up again you won't have enough time to get the A plus anyway. So failing should mean dying, because that's actually what I prefer. So that's the basics of the design. There is also something else to consider which is visual complexity. Um, this map is actually fairly simple. You just jump across here then once you get this key, you jump up on the side there and then uh, just run across and then fall down and you're basically in there. So the difficulties with this map is actually more about finding the pattern while hearing the unlocking sound of the lock doors. I don't know what it is actually. And figuring out the pattern and then uh, executing it. Uh, so visual complexity can add higher difficulty to a map that's actually fairly simple. Let's say uh, this map instead. You jump up here and then what you're basically uh, attempting to do, jump over, slide down, jump over, slide down and then jump over, which makes for really bad drawings. But the pattern itself is extremely simple. What's making it more difficult is actually all these saws down here spinning and distracting you. If it had just been like uh, a small saw blade, uh, oval one, and then uh, some sort of uh, needles and stuff down here, I think this map would actually have been easier. So cutting down on visual complexity is also something you can do. Uh, if you want to create more difficult maps mechanically um, or gameplay wise, you can just make it monotone like this one which is just in white and blue. So the jumps are fairly s uh, simple. Drawing in blue is a really bad idea. You just have to jump uh, something like this. S but the difficulty, uh, if this was like grey on grey, would be much harder. So
cutting down on colors is a good idea. This is actually my uh, one of my favorite maps in the game because it's so easy and well it's not easy but it's so easy to distinguish all the patterns of the saw blades so the challenge is not finding the solution it's just executing and that's what I like the most so uh, going back to it it's jumping jump it's pacing how long you have to uh, make a jump it's margin of error or margins which is just the I suppose it's the jump as well because it's more of a landing and then it's the visual complexity complexity so those are the basic design guidelines now I will go to my Photoshop files and try to create an example I've picked the sixth world uh, for this one no wait I have the brushes as well here uh, which are included in the download. I will link to my Dropbox account. So I have a Meat Boy, a Bandage Girl, a Saw Blade, a Flying Spaghetti Monster, uh, and all of these. I have not included the Rocket Launcher, for instance, or Locks and Keys and stuff like that. If you want to, you can just create it. I have also uh, included a Square Brush and a ro Rotated Square Brush, because I find it helps while doing the prototyping. So this is the uh, the file. Uh, I generally just uh, start out with a round, fairly small brush, and then I try to create the the path like you're supposed to jump. Yeah, jump there, jump up, 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 and then you're supposed to glide down and glide down and jump, jump. Let's say you want to make it something like that. You could make it a birdie chocobo. Um, so once you have that down, you will start drawing on the playing area alpha with the square brush. If you draw in white, we will just create um, or you will reveal the playing area um, material, which is just the the basic bricks that most of the sixth world is made up of. So you just draw on this alpha here. A wall there. And once you've done that, you switch to the saw blade brush and the saw blade uh, layer. You create the hazards, which are uh, in this case just saw blades. So you you put the saw blades wherever you think uh, should be dangerous. I don't know how to word it. Uh, whoops, I forgot one. Eh, let's not think about that too much. So once you've done the saw blades you, will, you can switch to the background detailing layer again switch to the square brush just fill it in with white and there is another brick texture allowing you to do uh, really quick and dirty uh, detailing. I've included layers for Meat Boy which you can just pick here switch to red color making them a bit bigger Oh, that was really big. Yeah, something like this. And then for the goal, pick a pink, uh, pink little meat girl, <laughs> bandage girl, and put her over here somewhere. Just one will be enough, but you get the point. I also uh, added a pipes layer, and then there's the sky at the bottom. So start with the design and layout, add the the world and the hazards, and then eventually you might end up with something like this. This is the uh, first example I made myself. And if we draw uh, the path in a smaller brush, how it's supposed to go is something like this. Glide across, jump to here, there. and something like that. So that's the prototyping tool. As I said, it will be linked below. Uh, check it out if you want to, and use the brushes as well. Good luck with your map prototyping. Over and out.